Okay, you've mastered the basics of Canvas, the interface, and how to change the settings in your sandbox space. Let's get started building the actual course content. So click on the link to your Canvas sandbox. And before we get into building the actual course content, let's look at the syllabus area. This, of course, anytime you teach a class, you're going to need to put your syllabus in it. And Canvas has a special page here in the, can in the course navigation menu that you can click on now to see where you would put your syllabus. This is a special page too because it will automatically show any Canvas assignments down here at the bottom with their due dates. It will automatically show your grading scheme uh, if you have weighted percentage grades on the right. So come back to the syllabus page later after you've done some more work in your course and you'll see some of these features. But how do you add your syllabus to this page? You can click edit and you can either just type in your syllabus of course or paste it from a document but of course most of you will have your syllabus in a document already, like a Word file or PDF. How do you add that document to this page? You can basically upload and attach it to this page by going over here to the right uh, area. This is called the Content Selector Tool. It has three tabs at the top. The first one is Links, where you can add links to other pages in the course or a link to a, an, an assignment or a discussion forum and so on. But we're going to use the Files tab to upload a file. Uh, you'll see also an Images tab, but let's stay here on the Files area and click Upload a New File. Click that again, and then Choose File. And it pops up your file dialog where you can choose the file that you want to upload. Click Open. And now uh, there is one more step to actually uh, attach it, is click this Upload button. That will upload that file and insert a link to that file right here in the middle of this page. I do recommend uh, before you save your changes though to edit this link so to make it more readable like take out the suffix where it says .doc in my case so it's more readable as you'll see later in this video we need to consider accessibility when we're creating content in our course someone may be using a screen reader for example and they don't need uh, that .doc at the end here uh, so once you fix that up though, click the update syllabus blue button at the bottom to save your changes. And you may need to refresh the page to see this, but you'll see a little icon will appear to the right of this link to the file. Anytime you link to a file in Canvas, it adds this little preview uh, icon. If I click that, it gives us a preview of what's in the document right here in the browser. This is very nice, especially if you uploaded a Word document, students don't need to download the document and install Word and all that to see it, they can just see it right here in the page. Uh, just one other little trick uh, tip <laughs> with the syllabus page is that um, you can also open your Word document or PDF and paste it here if you like to have the best of both worlds where students can have a printable file version but also they can read it. And then one other little advanced trick is if you click on this link to the file and then click this chain icon you'll see a little checkbox here that says auto open the inline preview for this link. Uh, this is a, a nice thing to do for your syllabus in particular. I'm going to click update link. And I'm going to save the changes and I may need to refresh the page to see this. Uh, sometimes it takes a minute to, to work but now you see I didn't even have to click that preview icon. It automatically opens the preview so that in case you didn't uh, paste the syllabus below the file this is a way to just quickly show students your syllabus without, uh, with as few clicks as possible. So let's get started building the actual content of the course. Uh, I clicked on home to go back to this modules area. That's the default home of our course. I could have also clicked modules. It's grayed out right now because there are no modules. And what is a module anyways? Uh, a module is similar to uh, like a folder or a container that basically is how you can structure your course. You might have modules for week one, week two, or module one, module two, or chapter one, chapter two. And in each module, you can add all kinds of items like pages or files or assignments or quizzes or discussions. And that ends up, it ends up looking like a table of contents in a, in a sense for your entire course on this page. So let's get started and add a module. Uh, you can click this blue plus module button to add a module. Anytime you see the plus symbol, uh, in Canvas that means add something. So let's click plus module and give this first module a name. If you're teaching an online or hybrid course uh, you may want to start with an orientation module. So I'll call it orientation module and then click add module. And there's not much to see right now. This is just an empty container in a sense or like an empty folder. 
uh, called orientation module. Let's go ahead and add a second one while we're at it. And I'll call this week one, or but again, you may want to call it whatever you like, module one, unit one, chapter one. And now we've got two empty modules side by side. Um, now let's see how do we add content to a, a module. This is again, look for that little plus symbol and it's lined up with the module. So I'm going to click that. And this is the main formula used to add all kinds of content to your course. There's a little pop-up menu at the top where, again, it shows you the different types of things that you can add to a module, an assignment, a quiz, a file, a page, discussion, a text header is basically just like a label to help visually uh, distinguish your module to make it a little bit more readable, an external URL, an external tool. Let's add a page here, content page. And if I had any existing pages in the course, that would list them here so I can quickly add a link to that page. But let's click New Page to create a new page. I have to give it a name, so I'll call it Welcome. So we'll create a welcome page and then click Add Item. And there now an empty page has been added to this module. And I'll show you how to uh, edit pages in just a moment. But let's go ahead and add a second page uh, just for the heck of it. Click on the add item but plus symbol again and then again choose content page click new page again and let's create a page called meet your instructor or meet uh, your professor whatever you want to call it and then add that item so now we've got two empty pages and uh, just one let's add one more thing for the heck of it uh, hit the plus symbol and that's out of file this time and select file and here it sees the files that I've already added to this uh, course space before. Like here's that syllabus that I uploaded earlier. I'm going to go ahead and add a link to that again and just click on it and say add item. And now we see something new and different. This green color here. There's, and also there's a green check mark. That shows that something is published. If something is not published, it has this circle with a slash. And that means it's not visible to students. In this case, though, actually, though, even though the syllabus has a green checkbox, really it's not going to be visible to students because it's in a module, or again, in this container that's not published. So I just click the circle with the slash icon next to the module to go ahead and publish the module, and you'll see it automatically publishes all the items in that module, too. But the second module is not published. So just to be a little bit more concrete and clear about what this means is publishing and not publishing. Uh, concept. Let's go to the student view. There's a student view button here right here on the home page to switch to see what does this look like from the student point of view. And here we go. There's the orientation module I just made and those three items I added. But you see that week one module, it's not even visible because it's not published. Uh, the student view, by the way, you'll see it, it adds a, a fuchsia purple pink bar at the bottom to let you know that you're in student view. Uh, you can click leave student view in the bottom right to switch back to the instructor view. And there's that week one again there. I can click the circle of the slash to publish it if I want to go ahead and make it visible to students, even though there's nothing inside it yet. And again, so just to recap, whenever you add an item to one of your modules, both the module and the item needs to be published in order for students to see it. The reason they do it this way is because uh, you may want to have something that you don't want students to see. Maybe you're still working on this page. I can unpublish it until it's ready. Say I add a week two module and start working on week two, but I don't want students to see it yet. I can either keep it unpublished like it is now, but there is one other option too to hide things from students until you want them to see it. Because Say, for example, you don't want students to start working on week two stuff until, you know, right before week two starts. And you could keep it unpublished and then just publish it right before week two starts, but that adds a lot of overhead for you. You have to remember to publish it, you know, in time. And of course, what if you forget? Then students will suddenly say, hey, where's week two stuff? So instead, you could go ahead and publish week two, but you can set an unlock date for this uh, module so that the materials won't become available to students until a certain date or time. To do that, you want to click the three vertical dots next to the module that you want to edit. Uh, these three vertical dots, whenever you see that, that usually is a button that has more options for things you can do with an item. In this case, when I click the three vertical dots next to week two, it shows where I can edit the module, like if I want to change the name, uh, or I can delete the module or move it. But let's go to edit for week two 
and here's a little checkbox for lock until I can say lock week two until a certain date clicking this little calendar icon and pick the date for this week to unlock there's also some more advanced features here like prerequisites and requirements I won't get into that in this video but I, I use some of these features in the Canvas Essentials course uh, that you can uh, ask us more about. Then I click Update Module to save the changes, and here's a little message now that's been added uh, below week two. It says, Will Unlock, and then it shows the date it will unlock. Now if I, uh, let me quickly add a, a page to that module just so you can see it. And I'm going to publish it, and it, notice it uh, published it both places. Uh, if I switch back to student view, now it shows there is a week one, but week two is grayed out. It, there's a little lock icon. So they can see that there's stuff in week two, but they won't be able to access it until that unlock date. Okay, so let's get started on how to edit content, edit pages uh, in your course. Let's go to this welcome page and let's create a nice welcome message uh, sort of a, uh, that we can turn into a landing page for our course. Anytime you're on a page, you'll see the edit button. And again, there's that three vertical dots too with other options like delete or view the page history if you want to revert back to a previous edit. Let's click edit. And here's the main editor uh, toolbar that we'll now dive into a little bit more deeply. There's all these different editor tools at the top, which uh, most of which you'll be familiar with using Microsoft Word or other tools like that, making text bold or bullet list. Uh, if in case your uh, window is a little small, like in this video, you may have to scroll to see the different options. But let's start making a welcome page. I'll say welcome to the course and and say some important resource important resources for this course. And I'll show you how to make hyperlinks too. Let's say we want to have links on this page to the syllabus. Uh, and then here's another little trick in case you don't have time to make images or buttons like that. You can hit the shift key and the, the key right above your enter key and it makes a little vertical pipe symbol. I use that to separate items. Uh, so I can say syllabus, then meet your uh, instructor, then another pipe symbol, and say course modules. And say we want to turn those into links in a minute. But first, let's look at other ways to format this page. I see a little typo there. First, though, we may want to center these items. You can select the text you want to center and click the center icon, again, just like Microsoft Word. Next, we may want to make these into big headers since they're more important text. I would recommend, instead of changing the font size, like it does let you do that, and you can make it bold, but for accessibility reasons, it's better to click on this paragraph item and change it to a header. Like I'll use header 2 for this first big header. Then this is an important text here too, so I'll make it a header three. For accessibility purposes too, it's good to kind of keep a hierarchy to your headers, so not don't have header two after header three and so on. Because again, screen readers, when they read this page, it will inform the person that this is a header that it's about to read. And then how do we add the turn these into links? Uh, for example, here's a link to the syllabus. I can select the text that I want to turn into a link. In this case, I want to link to the syllabus tool that's in the course navigation menu. So it's not a regular page here. I want to go down here to course navigation because I want to link to something in the course navigation menu. If I scroll down, there's course syllabus. If I click on it, now that's a link. If I want to link to meet your instructor, that's a regular page. So I'll go back up here to pages. And there's that meet your instructor page. So I can click on that and now that's a link. And course modules, that's in that course navigation menu, so I have to go back down here. And there's modules at the bottom. And now I have some uh, links so that students can have a quick links to certain areas of your course. If you uh, see here in the modules area too, you can link to individual modules uh, right on your, your page here that it will turn into a home page in just a moment. What if you want to link to an external website? There you'd use this chain icon. So say we want to for example, add a link to uh, the school website. I can first type in uh, the text that I want to turn into a link. Say so I want to center it, select the text, and then hit this chain icon, link to URL. And I can type or paste uh, the link. 
and say insert link and now that's a hypertext link to an external site I'm gonna go ahead and save my changes now hitting the save button to see what it looks like so far and it's starting to uh, appear like it's turning into a good welcome page let's edit again to look at some other things we can do in this uh, editor we can add images that's a common thing uh, you probably want to do on some of your pages what if we want to add like a banner image at the top well first let me show you how to find a banner image for those who aren't familiar you would uh, one place to look for that is to go to a different browser tab and go to Google and say I want to find a good picture of uh, Valencia College and switch to images and there's some images right there of Valencia that I can use uh, one other tip though is when you're in the Google image search if you click tools click on that expand some other options and some things to look at are usage rights if I change the usage rights to labeled for reuse I can find openly licensed images which I'd recommend you try to find uh, at first if you can uh, in this case though since it's a Valencia College image uh, it's uh, not a, an issue also if you look at the type uh, you can find animated images if you wanted to find like an animated gift to use for your course image for example let's say we want to use this image right here I can click on it then right click on the image and say save image as and I'm going to go to pictures again to save that because you do have to download the image to your computer and then upload it to canvas you can't just copy and paste it uh, over to uh, canvas if you are copying and pasting from a web page too, remember the images will not actually be copied to the canvas course only the text so let's go back to the editor click in the editor box where you want the image to be inserted now go over here to the content selector and go to the images tab I can also search Flickr for images or, or click on an image that I've already uploaded before but let's click here to say upload a new image choose file have to go to pictures to find that picture and there's the banner and click open now here's an accessibility feature again that canvas uh, changed recently this is nice though whenever you insert an image or upload an image you have to enter text uh, as that describes the image for again for people using the screen reader so I'll say uh, Valencia College East Campus uh, if, if you're uploading an image that only is for purely decorative port purposes like say a, a, a divider line or something like that you can check this decorative image checkbox too and click upload and it will insert the image uh, where you've placed it in the editor box if I click on the image to highlight it you'll see these little boxes appear in case you want to resize it you can also click this little button that looks like mountains uh, in the editor toolbar to change the alt text or change the dimensions here and then but once I hit save uh, I can see that now I've added a nice banner image to this page let's edit one more time and let's show you a couple other things that you may uh, want to do in a page one is say what if you want to turn an image into a link like for example maybe you want to make images for your modules or something like that but for the purposes of this video I'll turn this image that I've already uploaded into a link to the Valencia College website you just select the image it's just like before adding a link instead of selecting the text I click on the image to select it and then you can either choose something over here to link to in the content selector or click the chain icon if you want to say link again to a, a website and now when I hit save I can now click on this image and it will take me to the Valencia website okay and just two more things to show you very quickly uh, one is that yes you can insert tables into uh, a page too. this little table icon here is very similar to Microsoft Word at least at first say I wanna say I have 15 week modules I can do a 4 by 4 for example and then uh, type in week 1 week 2 and so on and turn those into links or image buttons to the modules if you click on the the table button again I can go to table properties and say make it center aligned and so on but there's some tricky issues with tables just to make you aware of one is that uh, if you create a table it's difficult to keep everything aligned properly another is that if uh, a table may look good on your computer but when students access your course using the canvas app it may not look good at all maybe not very readable at all 
it may uh, even make other stuff on your page not readable. So I do definitely recommend go to your app store, search for the Canvas Student app and the Canvas Teacher app. Those are both free apps and open up the Canvas Student app and log in and see what your course looks like in the app because surveys at other universities found that about three-fourths of students use the Canvas app uh, at least once a week in using Canvas. So they're going to be using the app to access uh, your course, so you might as well check it out too. So the last feature I want to show you is again related to accessibility. This is again very important nowadays. Uh, we have to be considerate of uh, all of our students and their needs. There's a, a built-in accessibility checker tool in Canvas whenever you're editing a page. Uh, here I have to scroll to the right and there's a little person icon here at the very bottom right. If I hover over it says check accessibility. If I click on that it will check my page for any accessibility issues. Like if I didn't have alternative text for this image, it would note that. And here we note one other issue that makes tables a little complex to work with is that every time you have a table to make accessible for people with screen readers, you need to have a caption. So say I can add a caption here for weekly modules and say apply. And also it wants a header row or header column for each table. So say I can make the first row, a header row, for example, and then hit apply. And once I've fixed all those accessibility issues, I get these balloon icons and it shows that I've fixed those issues. I can hit save. And now we've got an accessible page. The last thing is how do we turn this into our home page? If I click home on our course, it still shows the modules area. What if we want to make this welcome page the home page of our course? to make it a more um, welcoming landing page for students because if they come to your modules page and you have 16 weeks of modules it may be a little bit overwhelming at first to students. Uh, they like it too if you can create a home page that has quick links to all the important stuff in your course to save them time. So how do we make this page be the home page? We first click on the page and you can hit the three vertical dots here to say use as front page. And now uh, that's still not the home page though. It's a two-step process. So we first did the three dots and say use this home page. Now if I click home, it's still not the home page. That's separate from the front page. I know that's confusing. But there's this choose home page button on the home page. If I click that, I can change this home page option to say use the page as the front page, the welcome page. Uh, you can click this change link to make if you need to change which page to use as the front page. Hit save. And now if I click home, just again to confirm, now this page has become the home page for my course. So that's how you can create a home page. In the next video, we're going to look into how to create assignments, quizzes, rubrics, and other things like that.